Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing another one of the Celtic Transfer Talk videos. Probably the penultimate one heading into the end of the summer transfer window, which means there won't be any more um, until the winter when the transfer window opens up again. But as I said, penultimate one, I will do a kind of final roundup one on uh, Friday or Thursday, whatever day the deadline is, and round up the whole transfer window as a whole for Celtic. If I think we've improved, I think we've weakened here and there everywhere. We'll just generally talk about the transfer window. But today's episode is specifically talking about the kind of uncertainties I feel like there is in the squad and points we really need to improve now that we've been handed our Champions League group and now that it is very, very important, we have the right players, the right quality of players heading into this Champions League group stage if we want to be in European competition by Christmas time. Uh, over the past couple of games, we have seen those weak, these weak spots. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. I don't even need to say the words. You know off the top of your head. You know right away what I'm talking about when I talk about these weak spots in the team. We're still waiting. We've been waiting this whole transfer window and it feels like it's never going to happen. We're waiting, number one, for Patrick Roberts. What is happening? It got to the point where at the start of the window, I was like, right, I'm confident we'll bring him back. And then it died away. Didn't seem like it was going to happen. I was like, right, it's out the window. Doesn't look as though it's going to happen. We should just give up. Patrick Roberts is probably not going to come to the club. Then everything started coming back up again. We're going to go in for him. Then it died again. And then finally it came back up and it looked as though we were apparently set to announce a loan deal last week. All last week all I kept saying was Celtic should announce it tomorrow. They should announce it later this week. They should announce it tomorrow, tomorrow. Kept seeing that by Sky Sports and all the rest of it. And here I am still waiting like a dick for uh, Patrick Roberts to come whether on a permanent transfer or a loan deal. I don't know. We just desperately need someone of Patrick Roberts' calibre on the wing. We need that creativity. We seen it at St Johnson yesterday. We needed a player who could change the game like Patrick Roberts can improved many times last season. James Forrest, for as good a game as he could potentially have, as shite as a game, we're not talking about the bads of James Forrest in this situation, more or less the good. For as good as James Forrest can play in a game, I don't feel like he's got the same game changing uh, put, like you know the game game changing uh, what's the word I'm looking for I can't think of the word but he can't change a game like Patrick Roberts can I was thinking of a specific word and I can't think of it now he's not got that same capability that was the word capability he's not got the capability I think Patrick Roberts has to come on with, or start a game and change it when it needs changed up if we're struggling if we're lacking that something I feel like Patrick Roberts has got that creative spark in him to do something to do something that can change the whole perspective of the game for Celtic and get us back into a game or back in the lead and that is exactly Exactly what we needed yesterday against St Johnson for so long. We desperately tried to get into the game. We're, we're firing shots left, right, and centre, and we're creating stuff, but we just weren't finishing it. I feel like that's the calibre of player Patrick Roberts. He's, he can create and finish. He can do both. He can make something out of nothing. And, and every fan knows that, and that's the reason we need him back at Celtic. And for the Champions League, Hayes, Forrest, for a once again, as good a shift as they could potentially put in, I just don't feel like it's going to be good enough for what we need to get past the likes of Anderlecht in this Champions League group stage to potentially take us to the Europa League or somehow by a miracle take us to the Champions League last 16. Probably not going to happen, but Europa League at least. We need that sort of player in Patrick Roberts. Don't know when it's going to happen. Do not know when. Don't know if it ever will. Hopefully over the next week it will get wrapped up. We need it to wrap up. It seems like Patrick Roberts is ready to come. It seems like Celtic are ready to accept him. Man City are just being stubborn about whether or not to give him to Celtic. They want to give him out to a Premier League team. At the end of the day, aye, that might benefit him week in, week out. But I don't see where the negative is of him coming back to Celtic. He's playing well around a team he's familiar with, with one of the best managers in Britain at the current minute. Without a doubt, I don't care what you're saying. I don't care if you're English and you're saying he manages Celtic, shut up. He is, without a doubt, one of the best managers in Britain. He is working under a fantastic coaching team and he is playing Champions League football. Something he's not going to get wherever he goes in England. Because no Premier League team that is in the Champions League is going to loan out Patrick Roberts. You're not going to see Tottenham go in and take Patrick Roberts out and loan, are you? So he's coming up here, he's going to get Champions League experience against uh, PSG Bayern Munich this season. He's going to benefit. Maybe not as much as he would week in, week out, as I said. But even at that, will he get played week in, week out if he gets loaned out to the likes of Southampton? I just don't think so. But at Celtic, he's guaranteed to be that player who will be on the team sheet basically every single week. For a year, for two years, whatever. Hopefully we get him on a permanent deal, but at this point it does seem like it is going to be only on loan. Maybe there'll be some sort of condition in there where we can bring him in next season for a reduced price. But I'm not going to cross my fingers on that because I know it's unlikely. Um, but I, I feel like I've just had to continuously talk about Patrick Roberts for weeks upon weeks upon weeks in this channel when it should have all been wrapped up so long ago. And it's not been, and it's, um, I knocked the mic there, it's not been, it's very annoying. 
I feel like it should have been done right at the start of the transfer window. Even just a few weeks ago, before we headed into the tie against um, Astana. It should have been done by then. All the loose ends just need to be tied up. Man City, please get your finger out and let us have him on loan, please. We, we dial in need him. Uh, we need that creative spark. But more importantly, and this is the point in the video, to, do, to be honest with you, the, the centre-back situation is getting out of hand, right? I don't know how to look at it. Because to be fair to Celtic, to be fair to us, we've got our two, two of our main, two of our three main centre-backs out. Out of injury. So it's hard to actually judge what we'd be like if they two were fit. But near Baton, I'm sorry, he cannot be a makeshift centre-back. At first, I was thinking to myself, he might actually be decent at it. But against Astana, against St. Johnson, and a couple other wee performances here and there, he has showed that he cannot be a makeshift centre-back heading into Champions League group stage games. He cannot be. And I don't like this, this, this perception that he has to be defended because it's not his position in that. At this point, he seems indefensible. It really does, and I'm, I don't like go. And I say it all the time. I don't like going out and specifically going towards a player and saying you're shite because he's doing a better job than I ever could, right? Without a shadow of a doubt. But he is not cut out for it. He is not. He, he has not got the pace. He's not got the reactions. He's, he's. He has wee solid bits where you feel like, right, if you keep that up, you do well. But then he just goes and makes an arse of things. And he's just too slow in the ball. He doesn't have that mentality to make a split second decision. He just he seems too weird. He's a bomb scare. He can't take the ball, hold on to it like the, like Simonovic, Sviatchenko, or whatever. He seems very panicky. I just don't trust him being at centre half. Can you imagine him playing at centre half against the likes of Robert Lewandowski? I mean, maybe Sviatchenko or Simonovic isn't much of an upgrade against Lewandowski, but they would do a far better job at defending than Neil Baton. Neil Baton is not cut out to be a makeshift centre-back. He's not. And we can't go on this whole season relying on all our three, our three main centre-backs to stay fit when it's going to be, let's be honest, un very unlikely. I don't think that the three centre-halves are going to stay fit 100% of the time when they're all back in the team. Let's be honest with ourselves. It's not going to happen. And Neil Baton is not cut out to be a makeshift centre-back. Mikael Lustig, I don't think he's got it in him some of the time as well. He comes into the middle and he just doesn't seem like the same player a lot of the time. And, it's, and I love Mikael Lustig, but I don't know. It's the same kind of thing. I feel like he's just too... He's not trustworthy enough heading into big games. Christopher Ayer is still really young. We've got all these players who can play centre-back, but heading into a Champions League group stage, they're not, they're not capable. And it's not the trustworthy thing to do. It's not the right thing to do to put them in centre-back against teams like Bayern Munich and PSG. We were very close to getting this Rivaldo Coetzee guy and it seems the medical has broken down. So it kind of puts us back to uh, square one, doesn't it? It kind of puts us back to the point where we need to go and find another centre-back. And who's it going to be? Who can we attract that is going to come and perhaps not be week-in, week-out starter? Who is genuinely a realistic target at this point for Celtic with days to go? We've not got the full two months now to go and try and scout a few players and take a pick out of the few. We've got to make up a decision in a short amount of days because we do need a centre-back and Brendan Rodgers knows it. Considering we're going for Coetzee, he knows we need a centre-back. And now that that's broke down, it's failed his medical, it puts us way back to the start now. And we've got to find someone. We've got. Uh, we really need it. And I know a lot of people might be saying having too many. Like there's two. There's two kind. We spoke about it in my podcast. There's two kind of perspectives heading into it. You can either have too many centre backs or or not enough. And in my opinion, we've not got enough. Just because of fitness seems to be a really bad issue at the minute. I don't know what it is. Fiatchenko, he takes a knock, he's out for a while. But yeah, I seem to be okay, but he's took this really big knock. How will that affect him in the future? And Siminovic is a guy as well who can get knocked quite easily. He's had that in his career with Celtic. He's been out quite a, quite a few times with injuries. So how much trust can go into fitness? We do need a, another centre-half. Because behind them, the three covering them is Lustig, Ayer and Beton. And I'm sorry, they three... And I, I love Christopher Ayer. I, I love Christopher Ayer. I love Mikael Lustig. But for Champions League group stage matches, and I can't reiterate this enough, it is not the right thing to do to have them as our backup options. We need a proper trained centre half who is going to add some form of depth or first team quality to our team. End of discussion. A few talk, uh, people were saying in my comments go for the likes of Kieran Clark. We wouldn't get Kieran Clark, I don't think. Now that he, I mean, did he not score yesterday for Newcastle? I don't know. He played anyway. Kieran Clark may be unrealistic. Even a loan deal. Just we need something just to settle us. For this group stage, we just need to get something done in a short amount of days to improve the defensive quality in the team because we were shaky against St. Johnson yesterday 
And if it wasn't for St. Johnson being so defensive for the majority of the game, they really could have took advantage of that back line a lot more. We conceded four to Astana. If we concede four to Astana, how much does that mean we're going to concede to PSG? Just being honest. That is the honest truth. How much will we concede to PSG if we concede that much to Astana and Bayern Munich? If we do not have fit centre-halves in our team ready to play. We really need to get the finger out in these last four days, in my opinion. We need to get things done. Winger, centre-half. At the start of the window, I didn't think we needed a centre-half. But it really has been a wake-up call these past couple of games, and I'm sure you'll agree. It really has been a wake-up call to, to the fact that we need a centre-half, without a shadow of a doubt. So centre-half and winger, hopefully this Patrick Roberts thing gets done up with. We've got the money. The money's there to spend. Why not splash the cash? Why not? Why not go out for a quality centre-half that might cost a wee bit of money? We've got it. We just got 30 million quid the other day. Along with all the season ticket sales, the shirt sales, everything. We have money. And I don't I don't understand why we can't just dip the hand in the pocket and do something to increase our chances of, 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 of becoming a European, a, a good European quality team again. Getting through to the, the knockout stages of Europa League or Champions League. We need to dip our hands in our pockets. Coatsy has gone. Who's next? That's the question. If you've enjoyed, hit like and subscribe. Let me know your opinions of the whole situation. And uh, aye, until next time. See you later.